Hey, what's up dudes and girls? We're here in the gym, day three of the first phase, first week. Uh, it's a full body routine, but today we're gonna be starting off a squat. So we just took Lewis through some mobility stuff. Um, if you wanna check out some mobility stuff, we have some uh, videos for that, kind of specific for that. If you ever um, wonder kind of what to do to especially do any kind of upper body or lower body mobility. So uh, we just took some, some upper and lower body mobility. Um, we're gonna start off some squats here. So big compound movement. Lewis is, is loose, he's ready. And uh, we're gonna step them up to the bar here in the first, um, we're just gonna kinda go over a little bit of form just as a reminder. You know, we're starting off, of course, with this weight. The goal is three sets of six reps. Uh, now, Lewis squats, you squat quite a bit in school, right? Yeah, yeah. sure. Decent? Okay, yeah. So he does, he does sports course, and um, so he does a program in high school, and they get him on some, you know, pretty much the, the normal compound movements, I'd say. So he does know how to squat, but, it's always kind of good to go over it again, just as a reminder. So we're gonna hit that bar just about the upper trap area. So these are considered, um, you know, kind of like a standard squat, essentially. And uh, we're gonna walk you back. We're gonna keep your feet just outside hip width. The toes, you don't want to turn them out too much, so it should be about a 10 to 12 degree angle here. Same thing is where you want to really try to kind of corkscrew your feet into the floor without pulling your toes outward, so that's gonna create some torque in that joint, help stabilize you. So imagine you're kind of just spreading the floor with your feet as you're squatting down. And so we're just gonna get you down in that full position. Don't worry about going ass to grass, as they call it, which is that full full squat where your, your hips are coming all the way down to the floor. We'll try to get you parallel, just to start out, until you loosen okay. up. So we'll get you into position there, Liz. Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> Good angle. <laughs> That's getting real close. Okay, so we'll get your position here all lined up. Good, unrack it. So we'll get you set up first. Step you forward just a little bit there, Lewis, just so that way you're not hitting a cage here. Yep, feet position good. Corkscrew them into the ground. Turn those knees outward to make sure they fall in line with the toes. And here we go. Yeah. Your chin. That's the hardest part, I think. There we go, there we go. Good. Push those knees out, push them out, push them out. There we go. Job. So we're gonna keep that weight, that's perfect, and uh, we got one more set. So we're hitting rest times around 90 seconds or so, um, just because we are going a little bit heavier in the weight. Um, we want to make sure Lewis kind of recuperates and gets his energy back for each set. So that way he can try to hit that six rep range at the same weight on each set. The problem with kind of taking too short of rest times, let's say, you know, and sometimes it can get a little boring, you're like, I just wanna go right into it. Unfortunately, the body just maybe hasn't recuperated or, or you know, generated um, enough energy for the next set as it performed on the initial set. So, uh, so take some time, rest, make sure you get that energy back, and uh, you're gonna perform each set just about as good as you did on the last one. So that's kind of one of the most important things on this first phase, especially on the strength gaining phase, is that, you know, you kind of take your time, you rest up a bit, you drink your water, yeah. you have your water bottle. No. God damn it. <laughs> one of these days, one of these days we'll lose, we'll get it. But uh, he's getting some water, so stay hydrated, um, take time, breathing, control breathing. Uh, you know, we'll have a lot of questions, at people asking like how, how do you breathe or what's the control or what's the right, you know, way to breathe. Everyone kind of has their own method, but a good thing to keep in mind is that if you take a nice deep breath, of course you're gonna get as much oxygen as you can on the initial portion of the lift. So at the beginning portion where you have that bar here before going through the contraction of the muscle, take that deep breath. And as you squat down here, you're gonna have a slight hold and push air against the closed, closed pathway here, closed passage. So immediately as you push against that closed airway, you're going to contract the muscles and core, and then it, as you get through that difficult portion, lift, exhale, and if you kind of time it, you know, you're not obviously holding your breath for very long, it's only through that little portion of the hard lift. Um, that's called the Valsalma maneuver, which is contracting all those muscles and stabilizing not only the spine, but everything else, and, uh, and then exhale as you reach that top position and then repeat the process. So that one will get, make sure you get enough oxygen in each time, so you always remember, Deep breath, slight hold, that, be, that tough portion of the lift, and then, whew, you know, 
big exhale at the, at the top portion there. So you got Lewis set up here on the T-bar row. This is the next one, of course, staying in line with those three sets, six repetitions. So the T-bar row, of course, is an excellent compound movement for the back. You know, of course, we're working the back. And the good thing about this is, Lewis, if you want to step up, is it's going to stress uh, your core quite a bit, too, because you're in that bent over position. Go ahead and get position, Lewis. You're going to push your hips back. Keep that nice and stable. Neutral chin. There we go. There we go. Yep, and then you're going to retract the scapula as you pull up right to about the sternum level. So you can see this bar is hitting about the sternum there. Go ahead. So, five more. Good. Four more. Squeeze. Easy. Nice. So that's kind of the first set. You know, any kind of new exercise you do, it's a recommendation that you, you know, kind of take it easy. Don't go heavy right off the bat. As we said earlier, we did some one rep. Uh, max calculations on the first day. If you guys didn't see that, definitely check that video out. So that way you have a good idea of what to do if you really want to try to calculate one rep max. So that way you know kind of the percentages of to go with. So of course now we're going 85% is one rep max. We did not do the one rep max on some of these exercises because we wanted to also show what it takes to try to figure out, you know, for yourself on what is, what is the right, you know, wait for me if I don't calculate my one rep max. So it might take a little time. It might take maybe a warm up set, which is fine. Because the good thing about warm up sets too is you take the initial set and you kind of feel the exercise out, make sure you're proper form before going too heavy in the weight. Because sometimes if you put too much weight on right away, you know, you can get into that position, form starts breaking, and you know, obviously a possible injury, or just you're just not doing it right, and you don't even realize it. So sometimes take the time to do that warm up set, get the form down, get comfortable with the exercise, especially if it's something new, and then go up and wait from there. And of course, track your weight as you go along. So that seemed not too heavy for Lewis, I think it's a little too light for the six rep range, so what we'll do is add a little bit of weight and uh, get Lewis pumping on the working sets. So we got the overhead press set up here. Now, an ideal situation, as you can see, is you get a rack, so that way you can immediately take this bar, unrack it from here, and be right set up in the proper position with the bar at the clavicle. So Lewis, he's already been through the push press in the first day. Of course, this is the overhead press, not to be confused with the push press, although some of the, the you know, form still applies. You want to have a stance that's just about hip width here, toes pointing forward, but in this case, you want to lock your knees out. So it's gonna be really stable. Same thing, you want to kind of slightly screw in your feet here to stabilize that, squeeze the glutes, because that immediately is gonna stabilize this whole area here. Tight trunk, tight core. And uh, the bar's gonna start right at your clavicle, so right into the chance, the same thing as the overhead, or the push press. But in this case, you're not pushing anything with your legs because they're locked out. You're only gonna push with your shoulders, bob your head slightly out of the way for the bar, and then push straight up, get that full extension, and elevate the, the scapula just a little bit, the top portion to, to contract the traps here. So let's stitch up. And uh, it's not gonna be light, so make sure you get ready for that. So the forms will be vertical. That's when you know you have the proper position on the grip. Yep. So go ahead and step up. And all the way up. There we go. Get that bar right there. Cool. All right, back. So set up. Here, tight. There we go. And you're gonna push, bob the head out of the way. There we go. Full contraction, boom. And then notice it's nice slow on the way down. Right there, good. There's one. That's it. Bob the head out. And then push through, squeeze. Push through, push through. Push through. There, that's it right there. Good job. It's a natural, absolutely natural. So one of the mistakes too is of course with this one, when you push that bar, it's it's kind of awkward because the bar of course is riding right under your chin. So naturally you'll either want to bring the bar away here to move the bar out of the way of your face or lean back. So those are two mistakes. Uh, this is doing really good, but you do want to keep that nice vertical rigid torso uh, up here. So when you're pushing that bar, you kind of just kind of move your move your face out of the way. It almost seems like a like a chicken or like a like a some kind of bird walking around. You know, they're bobbing their head like this. So you need to bob your head out of the way and then push it through at the end. You, you don't want to push it through too much, but just enough where you have that you know the ears over the shoulder, neutral chin, and and so that way you're not keeping your head back here. You're getting back into that stable position so that spine is nice and straight. So kind of a couple things to keep in mind, but uh, you rock that man. That was good. How'd it feel? Yeah, all in the delts. Yeah, a little bit in the core. A little bit. Yeah, nice.
So if it's feeling in the right places, that's good. So you always kind of want to go through that in your mind too. Where am I feeling this? Am I feeling the right places? And again, when you're new at something, you could feel it maybe in your legs or your glutes just because your body's still getting used to a certain movement. But as long as you don't have any pain, as long as you don't have any discomfort uh, in, in a bad way, um, then you know, you're good to go for the next set. So had enough rest, set number two. bad. Yeah. What's going through Lewis's mind? Everyone wants to know. Uh, nothing much. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> all the blood's in his muscles, so he doesn't have yeah. too much working up there right now, which is cool. You know, <laughs> hey, it, it happens sometimes. When you're, when you're that focused, <laughs> sometimes you just don't have a lot on your mind at the time. You know, you're really just thinking about exercise, or he's probably thinking about, you know, get me the fuck out of here because I'm tired now. <laughs> I want to get some rest. I can't wait for the weekend. But uh, it's all right, you know. Hey, sometimes we have all those, you know, we have those days. But you know, as long as uh, as long as you're coming in here and getting the job done, and uh, like Lewis, real focused on each lift, then then it's a good thing. But uh, you know, you'll have those days too. You know, sometimes through this program, of course, we got a long ways to go. Yeah. You'll have those days where you wake up and you're like, oh, what, what, you know, what am I doing? This, this sucks. I'm tired. I don't want to work out. But uh, it is pushing past those mental boundaries and barriers that's going to make you stronger, not only physically, but of course now mentally too, because it's a mental game. Not a lot of people don't realize that, how much uh, it takes mentally to go through something like this, you know. You get in here, you know, you know all, all Luce's friends, you don't have a lot of friends working out. They don't really, they don't, you know, maybe not interested in this kind of thing. They might play sports, but they're not getting up at 5 a.m. to come to the gym and work out for an hour, an hour and a half, you know, so... It, and then you get like, oh, let's party, let's do this and stuff, you know. There's a, there's a lot of just, you know, these temptations of just giving up and ah, screw it, you know, I won't work out today. But I tell you, man, you get past that mm -hmm. and you'll reap the benefits physically but also mentally too. And it's 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 a nice thing because then you'll look back and be like, you know, I'm glad I did it. Yeah. You know? But it's hard. So we're with you. We've all been there. <laughs> and they all have too, so they're all rooting for you. So we just set up for the last compound movement, the last exercise. Um, well, technically not the last exercise. We got abs after this. But uh, the last big exercise for this today, and it's going to be the close grip press. So now, of course, the regular press on a bench is going to be focusing on the pectoralis major here. It's going to be a little bit wider grip, so those elbows run about 45 degree angle. You're going to bring it down to the sternum, press straight up with the scapula retracted. Of course, this is the close press. Huh. Much like the name explains, which shouldn't be too much of a mystery, you're just closing in your grip here. So the grip is running just shoulder here, and it's going to bring the elbows in a little bit tighter. You're still going to want to bring your scapula, you know, uh, back, retract those shoulder blades together, depress, and you're going to bring it down a little bit lower, so slightly lower than the sternum, and then you're going to get that full extension, get a nice squeeze in the triceps. So it is still working the chest, front delts, but also triceps quite a bit more because of the closed in grip. So Lewis is going to be sitting, or I should say laying on the bench position so how close do you want it like this just about shoulder so yeah perfect right there excellent so I'm gonna help you give you a lift off here so checklist retract scapulas okay bring it down to sternum here elbows gonna be running pretty tight down and then squeeze good one that's it two deep breath and oh. good squeeze that's it come on here we go oh. easy it's about perfect weight here. So Luce's feet are flat on the floor, um, his hips firmly planted on the bench, slight arch in the lower back, the lumbar here, but uh, main point of contact, of course, is the upper back. So that's where he gets most of his push and he's getting the full range of motion. Unfortunately, you'll see a lot of people, you know, they'll, they'll go a few inches down and go a few inches up and they're not really going the full range of motion, not getting the full benefit of this exercise. So the close grip press, especially, you want to get that full extension and squeeze at the top because that is actually going to activate the, uh, the triceps a lot more. So make sure you're getting that full range of motion all the way down, touch, all the way up, squeeze, and then uh, you're in for a good time or a bad time, <laughs> you know, depending on how much it hurts. <laughs> how much does it hurt? Scale uh, one to ten. 
Not too bad? Not All too right. bad. Well, just wait. <laughs> <laughs> we got two more sets. But he's getting his break, and uh, he's got two more sets of this. And then uh, we'll move on to some abs, and damn, loose is done. A little bit of stretching afterward, yeah. can't forget that. But then he's off to school. Mm -hmm. then, he, then he trains the mind. Oh, yeah. You do train the mind, Louis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just make it. Meditates and, you know, what else do you do? That's about it. That's about it. <laughs> he actually, he doesn't actually read any of the textbooks. He yeah, just meditates all day. But that's cool. It oh, works. Library. There we go. So you're going to be taking it, both hands, and you can either put the pressure on this one or pull it here. So this one you'll be kind of pushing, or this one you'll be grabbing and kind of pulling. Either way, you're going to get a pretty good balance on both. So you're just going to be taking it here. Knees can be slightly bent just for some cushion, but again, nice base of support here. And you're going to be taking it. You don't want to bend over and slack. You want to keep a pretty neutral spine, but you know, exhale as you bring it to the top position, and then bring it down here. What you don't want to do is turn too much in the hips, where you're just kind of like your hips are following through. You want to get a little bit more twist in your core section through here. So a little bit turn in the hips, but you really do want to feel most of the activation through here, your core. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Wide, wide stance, good base support. Here we go. Grab both hands. And then right. going. Yep, straight up, kind of at an angle, boom, just like that. Inhale, <sighs> exhale, good, nice and tight. Slow it down just a little bit, yeah. There we go, nice control. It's not too heavy, but we're gonna do two reps, so we're up in the repetitions a little bit on this one. There we go, good activation through here. You'll feel as you contract, so initially it's gonna be pulling from this side, and then as you bring it up, track, you're gonna feel it through here too. So it kind of gets both sides, although we are gonna alternate, so he's gonna switch sides on, uh, on the next. Next portion. Nice. What do you want me to do? Ten. There we go. They teach you to count to ten in school? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> so these are kind of some of the exercises that you can do to incorporate into your training that can help with specific movements. You know, of course, the wood chops here, um, training with some Olympic athletes, you know, if they're doing a lot of twisting, if they're doing a lot of core activation, which most athletes do, this kind of stuff is perfect for that, especially, let's say, if you're going up to bat, you have that really good core strength and you have the activation and the hips too, so everything kind of works together. And so these kind of movements can easily transfer over into the other, um, as well as like golf, you know, you have a lot of swing here, so you know, that's why these kind of exercises can be good. Um, if you're doing any kind of specific sports training, of course, you'll design a program around that. But uh, you know, in this program, of course, we're focusing on strength. The good thing about strength is it carries almost over into almost everything. So if you're strong at something, and if you're still limber and flexible, you know, you have that whole thing of where, you know, maybe in the 90s or you know, I should say maybe even 80s, people are like, oh, you don't want to be muscle bound, you gain muscle and you, you can't play sports, you can't be flexible. You know, of course, that's later found obviously as a myth. So getting strong, getting more capable, um, all you're going to be doing is hitting home runs or throwing those fastballs even better, you know, because now everything can activate, everything's strong, everything supports the joints. And again, you're limber enough, you're doing mobility and you're just going to be performing better. So yeah, it's an exciting time. You can tell too, Luz is following through with his chin. So when he's here, he's kind of using his hands as a guideline to follow through with the chin in his eye line. So keep in mind when you're doing these, you know, you don't, you don't want to be like here because like we've mentioned earlier, you really want to try to keep a stable spine and a neutral spine um, and stabilize. So if you're, if you're turning and your head's still forward, you know, that's going to be coming out of alignment in the cervical portion here the, of the spine. So try to follow through with your chin, kind of keep an eye line on your hands and that'll help you kind of keep that, that alignment in there and everything feeling a little bit better. So we really, really want to try to keep the arms, you know, either straight or they can be slightly bent but contracted to stabilize that position. Um, and you make all the movement through your waist, through the core area here, rather than you take it here and you're pushing through. So Luz made a slight adjustment to tell us, fatiguing a little bit, that was the last set, which is fine. But really try to keep those arms straight and just turn. So you kind of just keep them, this is like your, your, your center here. Your hands are right at your center, and you're twisting through your center. So almost, almost feel like your chest is attached to your hands here. So you're making all your turn through here rather than pushing through here, and it's just really an arm work. And then the core shuts off, and you're not really getting the benefit of the exercise. But uh, so loose is wrapped up. That's it. Yeah. Done for today. We're gonna go through some light stretches after this. Make sure he's feeling good. But uh, he gets the weekend off, so that'll be a nice feeling. Rest it up. Is. Have plenty of food. Uh, well, you don't really get the weekend off. You have a lot of games coming up, don't you? Yeah, I have Friday game. That's okay. it, though. Friday game. Saturday oh, that's and cool. Sunday. Nice. Well, that's good. So, yeah. 
We might surprise you with a with a weekend workout. No, <laughs> <Yeah>. not really. <laughs> He's like, oh, Jesus weekend Christ. six a.m. run. <laughs> exactly. We'll be knocking at your door like, dude, get the hell up. No. He's done for this week. Did an excellent job, and uh, that was the first week of phase one. Um, we have one more week of this exact same program that we're gonna kick ass on, and uh, man, I'm proud of you. Thanks, Good job. <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> nice. What do we tell him? Stay buff. Stay buff. Yeah.